Hi, this is a IMS registration call flow video. Mobile handset need to first latch on to the LT network and thereafter IMS registration is done. Only after IMS registration, user can make MO or MT calls on Volti network. Do you want to learn Volti call flows? This is the right place for you. We will be focusing on call flows for Volti UE attach and SIP IMS registration here in this video, which is a crisp extract from the 3GPP and GSMA documents. Okay, let's start with Volti SIM IMS registration. I believe in building concepts which means without a solid foundation, you will have trouble creating anything of a value. This video will cover up end-to-end -end Volti registration call flows from LT attached to bearer creation to SIP registration in depth. Let's quickly jump onto the call flows. Let's go to next slide. Okay, here is Volti registration. Prior to use Volti service, a user must be attached on LT network. Typically, Internet APN is connected first, followed by IMS APN connectivity on LTE network. Next step will be IMS or SIP registration, which will enable user to make voice or video calls over Volti along with using supplementary services. This network depicts the UE connectivity to LTE network. Here we are going to see end-to-end -end signaling picture for Volti IMS registration. For using Volti services, user need to go through these steps. The first one is attaching LT network. The second one is user will be activating default internet EPS bearer post which user will be able to use and access internet. Third step will be default IMS EPS bearer activation which will be used for communicating with IMS network. The last one is the step followed for SIP and IMS registration where UE will directly communicate to IMS network. Here LT network will only act as a super highway to relay messages between UE and IMS network. Post IMS registration, whenever UE is making MO or MT calls, dedicated bearer will be established on the fly. We are going to discuss all these call flows in detail in coming slides. You can see on the screen there are two bearers which are providing the connectivity as mentioned in the yellow color. First bearer in yellow color is for internet connectivity. The second bearer in yellow color is for IMS network. This carries both SIP signaling used for IMS registration and voice calls. Let's discuss them in detail moving ahead. Let's go to next slide. Let's see the role of EPS bearer. Bearer in dictionary means carrier or porter, which carries something from point A to point B. Under the context of communication technology, I would define the bearer as a pipeline connecting two or more points in the communication system in which data traffic flows through. We'll discuss default EPS bearer first. The default EPS bearer is established during the LTE attach itself. It always allocate a IP address to the user. Default EPS bearer is used for always connected bearer, which effectively means it's used for internet connectivities, which uses QCI 629. It's also used in SIP signaling connectivity for Volti signaling which uses QCI 5. Now we'll go to dedicated EPS bearer. Dedicated is a child bearer which is established during a call. It can be a voice call or it can be a video call. There is no IP address allocated to this bearer. It uses the IP of a parent which is allocated to the default bearer. It is linked to a particular default EPS bearer every time and always. This has a specific QS which is usually guaranteed one. It is used for on-demand bearer services such as making a voice call which uses QCI1 or a video call which uses QCI2. 
Let's understand the concept of QCI in the next slide. What if LT radio is congested? Have you ever thought what will happen to voltage video calls or voice calls during radio congestions? As a general principle, data internet can wait for some time, but voice or video cannot. A voice or video call has to be real time, has to follow a real time path wherein internet traffic can wait for some time and can be paused. QCI is used during congestion to give seamless access to critical traffic such as voice and video traffic which cannot wait. As the network load increase, prioritization determines which traffic will pass through and which one will wait. In such scenarios, internet traffic running on QCI 6 to 9 will be blocked in case of insufficient resources. QCI 5 is used for Volti IMS signaling. QCI 1 is used for Volti IMS voice calls. QCI 6 to 9 is used for internet. This is always low priority traffic as compared to Volti high priority traffic in QCI 5 and 1. Now let's discuss Volti UE attach and IMS registration. Before we jump onto call flow, I would like to cover brief concept of QCI mixed up with default and dedicated bearer in Volti. When UE is turned on, it establishes a PDN connection with default APN. Typical operator provides two APN, internet APN and the IMS APN. The default APN is an internet APN that is used for internet data traffic and its default EPS bearer has QCI value between 6 to 9. After the PDN connection is established with the internet APN, the UE attempts additional PDN connection with IMS APN. The IMS APN is pre-configured in the UE and its default EPS bearer has QCI value of 5 being used for SIP signaling. Once the PDN connection with IMS APN is completed, the default EPS bearer is successfully created. The UE is able to communicate with IMS core for Volti services. We'll discuss attach procedure for IMS APN in coming slides. I'm again repeating QCI 6 is a default bearer for internet. QCI 5 is another default bearer which is used for establishing SIP registration on IMS network. QCI 1 is a dedicated bearer which is used for voice calls. Similarly, QCI 2 is used for video calls. These both are dedicated bearers. LT attach and default internet EPS bearer. Let's start with call flows here. As a first thing, user is going to send the attach request to the MME in LT network. The MME is not having any profile of a user. It will send the update location request to the HSS. The HSS here is having all the database of a user as you are aware. The HSS is going to acknowledge the update location message by sending an update location ACK message to MME. Here HSS sends back the complete profile of a user. This profile also confirms to MME whether IMS APN is allowed to the user or not. After location update, MME sends create session request to S gateway P gateway. The P gateway will check the PCRF over GX protocol and checks with QS and speed to be allocated to user. As you are aware, internet will be allocated to non-guaranteed bitrate with QCI between 6 to 9. This is a best effort quality of service as per radio conditions. The SI gateway will send create session response to MME which completes the transaction by completing attach process. Here two parameters have been updated to user equipment or user. The first one is the VOPS support, which effectively means voice over PS network support. Another one is SRVCC support. These two are critical parameters which are used by UE to decide the Volti selection. 
On basis of VOPS support, UE is going to decide whether to use IMS service as covered in the upcoming slides. Once UE is attached to the network, he is able to use Internet APN and Internet services. Now let's quickly go to the next call flow wherein we are going to discuss a similar call flow for IMS EPS bearer. So user, user is already connected to internet here. We are going to cover IMS APN connectivity in this slide where user uses QCI 5 for prioritized access even in case of congested scenarios. The UE attempts additional PDN connection with IMS APN. The IMS APN is pre-configured in the user equipment and its default EPS bearer has QCI value of 5 being used for SIP signaling. Once the PDN connection with the IMS APN is completed and the default EPS bearer is established, the UE is able to communicate with the IMS core for the Volte call services. User is going to send the PDN connection request to MME in LT network with IMS APN as a first part. The MME sends create session request to SI gateway directly. Now it need not to go to HSS in this case because it have already done a location update in the previous slide and it already has the database of a user. The SI gateway asks PCRF over GX on what QS to be supported by the user. The PCRF replies back to P gateway with the QS detail which contains QCI5. The SI gateway will send create session response to MME which completes the transaction by completing activate default bearer request. Now user is connected to default IMS EPS bearer. Here one additional parameter protocol configuration option PCO is used for getting some additional information for user about a network that is connecting to. It effectively means the PCSCF address which is a proxy server address of IMS network is sent to user with help of PCO option. As a next step user will connect to PCSCF for SIP registration on IMS network. Now we have already covered LT attach default internet EPS bearer default IMS EPS bearer. In the next slide, I am going to cover SIP IMS registration which will involve lot of SIP communication here. Now we are going to cover the SIP registration call flow. This is our first attempt which we are going to cover. This first attempt is being challenged by the SCSCF and is being rejected with error 401. User is going to attempt again as shown in the next slide and here we will get success. Now quickly uh, let's see what happens in this first attempt and how does it fail and what are the chronology of messages which are being exchanged. Once the UE attaches to the 4G network and the default EPS bearer is created successfully with the IMS APN, the UE registered to the IMS network before accessing the Volte services. The IMS registration procedure includes the IMS authentication that is IMS ACCA and security negotiation between UE and IMS network. After successful IMS registration, the IMS network becomes aware of UE context such as subscription profile, registration status, etc. After the initial IMS registration, the UE shall refresh the IMS registration status by periodically sending re-registration request. First, the user agent on the UE attempts to register with the IMS subsystem using an unauthenticated registration attempt as shown in the screen. The first message is the SIP register which goes on a path from UE to E node B to SI gateway to PCSCF. The Volte UE initiates a SIP register to PCSCF using the PCSCF IP that was made available during the LT attach using the PCO parameter. The SIP register contains this message includes 
पब्लिक यूजर आईडी, प्राइवेट यूजर आईडी एंड द होम नेटवर्क सिप यूर आई नाउ पी सी एस सी एफ फॉरवर्ड द सिप रजिस्टर टू आई सी एस सी एफ द पी सी एस सी एफ रिसीव द सिप रजिस्टर रिक्वेस्ट फ्रॉम द यू एंड इंसर्ट्स आर पाथ हैडर विद सिप यू आर आई आइडेंटिफाइंग द पी सी एस सी एफ फॉर रूटिंग एंड फॉरवर्ड्स द रिक्वेस्ट टू आई सी एस सी एफ द आई सी एस सी एफ नेम इज डिटर्माइंड बाई आई डी एन एस क्वेरी और मे बी प्री कन्फिगर्ड विद इन द पी सी एस सी एफ सब सिस्टम Once ICSCF got the SIP register message, it talks to HSS to get the detailed subscriber information for the user authentication. With UAR diameter user authentication request, two things are retrieved here. First one is the authentication information, and second one is about SCSCF information. The ICSCF queries the HSS using the user authorization request for authorization and obtaining the SCSCF name for the public user identity. the hss validates that the public user identity and the private user identity are valid or not barred icscf to select the appropriate scscf on basis of the hss response once the scscf is identified the icscf forwards the sip register request to the scscf SCSCF sends MAR multimedia authentication request to HSS the SCSCF identifies that SIP register is a part of initial IMS re registration with IMS ACCA related security the SCSCF initiates a multimedia authentication request to HSS to retrieve the authentication vectors to perform IMS ACCA security The HSS stores the related SCSCF name for public user identity being registered and returns authentication vectors to SCSCF. HSS sends MAA multimedia authentication answer to SCSCF for selecting and saving authentication vectors. Now something unusual happen here. The SCSCF challenges the UE at this point of time. Upon the receipt of IMS ACCA authentication vectors the scscf stores the xres and replies to the sip register request with the error code 401 401 unauthorized response indicating that akka v1 md5 is the security mechanism which is going to be used icscf forwards the 401 unauthorized authentication information to pcscf which is further forwarded to ue through lte access network now this sip registration request have failed now quickly jump on to the next slide where user is going to send another sip registration request which got success as we are aware the previous sip register was challenged by scscf and returned back with error 401 now ue will send another sip register to the network the ue creates a temporary set of security associations based on parameter received from the pcscf and sends a new register request to the pcscf with the populated authorization header containing the res indicating that the message is integrity protected now the pcscf checks the temporary security associations and verifies the security related information received from the ue the pcscf forwards the sip register request to icscf with the res included The ICSCF uses the user authorization request message to retrieve the SCSCF name stored within the HSS. Now ICSCF forwards the request to the relevant SCSCF. The SCSCF checks whether the SCSCF checks whether RES received in the SIP register and the XRES previously stored are matching or not. The SCSCF then performs SAR server assignment request procedure to the HSS to download the relevant user profile and register the Volte UE. The SCSCF stores the root header of PCSCF and binds this to the contact address of Volte UE. This is used for routing the Volte UE in future messages. Now registration is complete. SCSCF sends 200 OK message to ICSCF. On receipt of the 200 OK from ICSCF the PCSCF changes the temporary set of security associations to newly established set of security associations it protects the 200 OK with this association and send 200 OK to the Volte UE all future messages sent to the UE will be protected using these security associations 
एज एज अ ऑप्शनल थिंग पी सी एस सी एफ सेंड्स ए ए आर मैसेज टू द पी सी आर एफ टू परफॉर्म एप्लीकेशन बिल्डिंग टू द डिफॉल्ट बियर दैट इज द पी सी एस सी एफ इज रिक्वेस्टिंग टू बी इन्फॉर्म्ड इन द इवेंट ऑफ डिफॉल्ट बियर बींग लॉस्ट और डिसकनेक्टेड इन ऑर्डर टू ट्रिगर एन आई एम एस डी रजिस्ट्रेशन द पी सी आर एफ परफॉर्म्स द बाइंडिंग एंड रिस्पॉन्स विद ट्रिपल ए मैसेजेस टू द पी सी एस सी एफ नॉट इफ दिस यू ई मैसेज इज नॉट सेंट दैन द आई एम एस रिलाइज ऑन अदर मैकेनिज्म टू डिटेक्ट द लॉस ऑफ अंडरलाइंग डिफॉल्ट बियर दैट इज लॉस ऑफ कनेक्टिविटी एग्जाम्पल टाइम आउट्स ऑन ट्राइंग टू सिग्नल टू द यू ई फॉर एन इनकमिंग कॉल और द यू ई रजिस्टर इन द आई एम एस विद न्यू आई पी एड्रेस सो दिस एक्ट एज अ ब्रिज वेर इन एनी थिंग रिलेटेड टू यूजर बियर इज कम्युनिकेटेड टू पी सी एस सी एफ फ्रॉम द पी गेट वे वाया पी सी आर एफ द वोल्टी यू ई इज नाउ रजिस्टर्ड विद द आई एम एस नेटवर्क फॉर वोल्टी सर्विसेज विद सिप सिग्नलिंग बींग ट्रांसपोर्टेड ओवर डिफॉल्ट ई पी एस बियर द यूजर कैन नाउ यूज वोल्टी सर्विसेज देर इज वन लास्ट रजिस्ट्रेशन विच इज पेंडिंग विच इज गोइंग टू हैपन इन द टैस we are going to cover the tas registration here the role of telephony application server tas is to cater the all mobility telephony part services requirement for user this includes couple of services which typically belongs to the mobility such as address normalization call diverting call forwarding barring etc in a natural tas is what makes the volt ue enhancements on top of the pure voip This procedure is done to update the user profile in TAS so that the further call handling can be done by TAS effectively. The SCSF entry uh, registers the mobile with the TAS. The first message is the SIP register which goes from SCSF to TAS. The TAS entity sends UDR user data request to HSS. This is used to retrieve mobile service data. The answer is provided by HSS with UDA. user data answer message optionally tas updates the profile from the hlr for supplementary services with help of map restore data and insert subscriber data messages finally tas completes the sip registration by sending 200 okay to scscf now we have covered the complete volti ims sip registration with completion of this procedure now since all the steps are complete depending upon handset to handset user will get volti symbol as shown on the screen in next video we are going to cover up call flows for mobile originating and mobile terminating if you want to download this ppt or video please visit my website telecomtutorial.info hope this video presentation is useful for you Please feel free to like, dislike, comment and share. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more technical videos.